Sometimes when I have a, a mental block when it comes to a paint finish, I start off with one coat of paint and then somewhere along the way, I kind of figure it out. So you're gonna join me on figuring out how to create this really soft, woody effect on this French headboard. So let's take a closer look at the actual project. Okay guys, so I'm gonna take you through my thought process for this bed. I know that I want to create some sort of grainy, sort of different nuances of colors across this bed. Now, had I been reupholstering, it would have been really easy just to do the frame, all of this beautiful detail, quite simply. But we've got this large expanse of space on the uh, headboard and the footboard. And if I'm gonna do a grainy kind of wash, it means that I have a direction using my brush in a certain direction to create that look. Now, on a French bed like this, it would look rather strange if I just went right to left or up or down. Traditionally, these beds are covered in a veneer and they are a kind of butterfly. So the veneer is split through the middle, butterfly that way, and then butterfly the other way. I can see here, you won't see on the camera, there is the veneer has just slightly shown through this paintwork all the way down. And it also has a border that runs round the edges. So that kind of takes up some of the blank space in here. And I can also see that the grain is going across this way, across that way, across that way, and that way. So I kind of want to use that as my guide of where to apply my streaky paint, if, if you can call it that, that wood grain effect. But what I am gonna struggle with is, I can do that with masking tape. I know that I can uh, separate that off beautifully and work on each quarter. Um, but I have got this trim in here, this um, banding around the edge. Now, how do I get from one connection to the other? Yes, I could masking tape and go around the curves, but I think a simple thing to do is add a would you bend, just a very simple trim all the way around just to add another little detail. I'm not gonna over embellish this, it's just gonna be a simple edge so I can work up the four quarters and then in the banding around the edge, I can go with a, a different uh, direction with my gray. I hope that makes sense. I know that's a lot of information, but you will see as I go along. So the first thing that I'm going to do um, is add the Would You Bend moulding to the edge of this. I can slightly see where that banding is so I can work my way around very carefully and create a lovely edge all the way inside the headboard. So off we go with the Would You Bend trim. This is actually one of mine from the House of Mendes collection. It's a simple centimetre wide, half round, no detail on this trim. It's something that I really felt passionate about bringing into the market and the wonderful folk at Would You Bend kind of made this happen for me. So I'm super happy and I've had lots of uses for this particular trim. So, as you can probably see, I'm struggling away with a hairdryer. Now, would you bend mouldings go on with a little bit of heat and you can do this with a hairdryer. The reason that I am actually using the hairdryer is because my heat gun went kaput just before I started this tutorial. So, I'm taking my time with the hairdryer. It's not ideal. 
I would go with a sausage grill or a heat gun. It, it, the heat is just a lot stronger and easier to manipulate the moldings. But never mind, it's going on, as you can see, just a little bit more time consuming. So that's the Would You Bend trim in place. I'm really happy with the overall layout. I have to be honest, working without my heat gun was not fun. That's Lily saying goodbye. Um, but nevertheless, they're in place and working with a hairdryer, it can be done just a little slower. So now let's move on to mixing up a color for the base coat. And all of this um, work that we've just done should make more sense once it's had a coat of paint and then we can think about how to create that weathered wood look. So I've decided that I wanted my base coat to be quite dark. So I've gone with a colour mix using majority French linen. And then as you can see, I'm just dumping graphite and enfleur to darken the French linen up. So this should end up quite like a taupe colour um, and I'm really hoping that this will be a great base colour to proceed with all of my lighter tones over the top.
Base coat is nice and dry. It was just a scrub coat because we're gonna do the now decorative part of this wood grainy effect. So looking at the actual footboard here, I can see where the original butterfly effect or quartered effect of veneer is, but it starts in the center and it actually drops down to the sides. So it's not completely horizontal through the middle. It is straight down through the middle as well. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some decorator's tape just to mask and tape each quarter off straight down the middle and the um, top section. And once that's dried, I'm gonna repeat the kind of wood grainy effect the same way on a 45 degree angle, because that's the way that the grain is going. I can see it underneath the paint. Um, it will get fiddly because I'm gonna have to let one side dry before moving on, but I've got both of the boards here, so I might jump from one to another. So in with the decorator's tape. Okay, so what I've got here is a chip brush, quite a worn, dry chip brush. You can see the bristles are kind of rough. I have a plate with my four colours on. So the taupey colour that we mixed for the base coat, we've got um, French linen, country grey and old white. So my plan is to kind of dip the brush in randomly random pick each colour out on each side of the brush, sometimes on one side to the other. Also, I've got a board of wood or a piece of cardboard just to offload some of the paint off the bristles. And I'm gonna go in on a 45 degree angle. Sometimes I'm gonna go with the brush on that angle, kind of flicking it, and sometimes that angle. So I'm gonna start probably at this side and work my way to the centre.
So that's the lower half complete and I've waited for this to dry really well before applying my next layer of decorator's tape to cover up the lower half and straight through the center. I'm really pleased with how this grainy effect is taking shape. Basically, it's just lots of different shades of colors, different nuances applied in thick and thin strips along the angle that you can see me working at. And I'm just blending away, blending, kind of leaving texture behind. It really, really does look quite authentic.
Okay, so I'm now day two of my French bed makeover. As you can see, I'm in my jacket. It is super cold in here today. Although it's brighter than yesterday, for some reason, it's cold. Um, this should not affect my dry brushing. It will dry pretty quick because we're gonna be using minimal paint. Now, I'm at that point where I'm trying to make decisions on how to, where to go with this. Mr. M walked into the studio last night and said, leave it, it looks great like this, but I want to make it more conducive. I want this wood grain effect to be all over the bed. So, um, although I'm quite undecided whether to leave the banding in between the outside and this, I might leave that as a straight finish with just the dark taupe color. Um, I suppose I've just got to get stuck in and, and see where it takes me. I will start with the outer edge. I'm gonna miss out um, the dry brushing of the dark taupe first because it's already there. One thing that I did do before I left the workshop that I didn't film last night is I touched up all of the taupe around the edges, but I did it quite heavily and left lots of brush strokes in the direction of the wood grain that I want to be visible. This should help the dry brushing. So once I hit it with the paler colors, which I'm gonna start with the straight French linen, build that coat up first and then move down to the country grey in random areas and maybe a touch of old white. And we should end up with this sort of colour palette as we see in the middle. Um, let's get stuck in and see where it goes.
So I'm really getting into the swing of things now with the dry brushing. So I'm gonna start with the um, French linen and I've got my little chip brush offloading on the board, making sure that I offload to the edges of the brush because they tend to load up and then you'll get a streak in your dry brushing. So really offload that brush and then a light tickle just to feel how that dry brushing is going on. So here we go. You can see, try and move in long swoops along the edge. Detailed areas are a little bit easier. You can kind of go any what way. but just build up those layers of dry brushing. This is the French linen. Offloading again. We'll, we'll start this section here. Difficult on the corners, you've got to kind of go in a swoop. So you might want to change your brush angle just to tuck into the edges. and slowly, slowly build up that dry brushing. Start with minimal pressure and then build up the pressure as you can see what the paint, how the paint is offloading. So, and then you can see, probably on camera, all of those lovely sort of grain brush marks. Just tickle over the edge of that detail. 45 degree angle over the detailed areas. And build up your dry brushing to where you feel happy.
So I'm now at the final hurdle. I'm really happy with the dry brushing. It kind of looks wood grainy. Now time to add a coat of wax. Now, tinted waxes, I was gonna go with white wax, but it kind of, for me, wouldn't make sense. If it goes into the details, you've got the lighter color on the top, and then you can add lighter color into the details. And I do want this to look kind of woody in its um, appearance, but softer than wood. So I'm gonna go in with a full coat of clear wax and then maybe add a touch of Annie Sloan dark wax to certain areas. If it looks good and I get brave enough, I may even go over these um, markations that I've added. There's lots of brush texture in there, so I should think it will pick up on the brush texture and just add another level of dimension. So let's get stuck in with the clear wax. So all of the clear wax is over the whole body of the bed frame and I'm now gonna go in with a tinted wax. I'm gonna go in with dark wax for um, the detailed areas. And I'm just gonna feel my way around this. I do kind of feel like I want to put it across the grainy stuff in here, but I'm worried about what color it will turn out. Mr. M likes this as is. And of course, if this is the kind of look that you're going for, just stop. But I'm gonna start out with applying dark wax to the edges with a detailed brush. I've got a pot of clear wax and my wax brush just here to remove any uh, anything what I'm not happy with because clear wax, once you've waxed the surface, clear wax will remove the dark wax. Should I not like the dark, dark wax at all, then I will just remove it with a clear wax. But let's see how this looks. I will start out small and maybe grow bigger and be brave enough to pop it into the middle. Let's see how it goes.
Yeah, yeah.